does anyone else procrastinate? Maybe a better question is, does anyone not procrastinate? If you don't, good for you. How does it feel to be built different? For the rest of us, don't you just wanna... I'm putting hours this week into writing the Christmas short film script, which I'm pushing to have done by Monday, so I can start with the rest of the process. But I thought filming me staring at a computer while I type a few words every few minutes is probably not the content you guys wanna see. So instead, history lesson. Procrastination is not just a modern issue. Although the case can be made that modern technology is a factor in widespread unproductivity and distraction, it's not at all the cause. It is part of the human condition. Remember Mozart? This dude wrote the overture for one of his pieces the night before it was supposed to premiere. He had not rehearsed it, nor had the ink on his music sheet had time to dry before he performed his now famous opera, Don Giovanni. Now phones weren't around in 1787 to distract Mozart from writing his overture, but alcohol sure was. It is said he was hungover while writing this piece, just to give you some more context. Humans really are amazing creatures. Victor Hugo, the French poet, novelist, and writer of Les Misérables, or you may know it better as Les Misérables. He also struggled deeply with procrastination, and let's just say he had a more creative remedy for it. See, he would lock himself in his room and take off his clothes to encourage him to stay inside and finish his work rather than go out in town. Weird, I know. That's enough history history for this video. The point is, humans have issues. Now, for my personal history of procrastination. High school, 2016. I learned the golden rule. If you don't start an assignment until 20 minutes before it's due, the assignment only takes 20 minutes. This is obviously horrible advice. Even then, it only works if there is a deadline, and most of the time in life, there isn't. Once I had basically figured out that I wanted to be a filmmaker in 2017, I started writing films. Evidently, I didn't finish my first one until 2018. When I finished writing my film away, I decided I wanted to make it happen. I wrote it only to include my brother and two of my friends, so it was pretty easy to film. I filmed a scene where my little brother Ben, who is the star of the film, is running from one of the bad guys in his imagination. Um, I had a lot of fun shooting it and editing it, um, but I'd only done that scene and quickly after I lost confidence in the entire project. I worried that the script wasn't strong enough, that people wouldn't understand it, or that it wasn't even worth making, and I kind of just let it sit. Now she doesn't know it now, but one day in school when I was not doing school, I was watching my half-created projects. I showed my classmate what I had at the video and she asked when it would be done. That conversation inspired me to finish the film in only a few weeks just before the film festival. Even so, the night before the film festival, I was considering pulling it, but uh, another friend assured me that it was great. That being said, I still think the eight minute film has a vaguely confusing story and the audio mixing, editing, and grading is hard to watch, but it was important that I finished it. The next two shorts I made, I am far more proud of. Both of them were created for short film contests and only run at two minutes or less. The first one had a skeleton script with certain lines that had to be included, and beyond that, we could make it into whatever we wanted. I made a Western, naturally. What is that? Don't know. Gosh darn it, they followed us. We gotta make sure that they can never get this treasure. The second was a horror contest. I made a film that has a fun twist, but it was a bit rushed since it had to be in 60 seconds. But for sure, one of my favorite projects. The reason I bring these up is because I didn't actually start production of either of those two films until a week or so before the deadline. That's why I was super thankful for these competitions because they gave me projects to finish. Unfortunately, after a few months of me participating, COVID hit and they stopped the contests. And I kind of stopped creating content for a bit. As of now, I have five scripts ready to be made into short films and three in the works. Writing takes time, but I didn't start production on any of these because in full honesty, filmmaking is difficult and I didn't have a deadline for those scripts. Then I got two pieces of advice that changed it all. Number one, finishing projects allows for something important progress. 
Moving forward with a project behind you, whether failed or successful, it is behind you, and a new one is ahead. You can't learn to finish a good project if you can't even finish a bad one. Number two, set goals that are difficult. If you do, you'll get more done faster. If you try your hardest and don't make the goal, you probably get more done failing than if you had gone for the easier goal. These personally helped me a lot. I strive to make goals that encourage me to, you know, finish projects. That's why I took a break from writing my Christmas short film to make this video. I want to make sure that I'm doing the best now to reach goals later. Procrastination sucks, but I knew it was stopping me from moving forward. And staying still is worse.